it's Miss Cracker, and it's time for this week's review with a Jew. RuPaul's Drag Race season 10, episode 10. And I am a winner! All right, let's get right to the motherfucking episode. It is season 10, so it starts out with the drama. It was a double save last week. Cameron and Eureka to the tune of like, 900 pounds of man. Aquaria is not having it. She was counting on being in the top five this week. She wants it to be right now! I stay the fuck out of this shit. Aquaria and I have already had our storyline and we've been having a nice time lately. Just this morning in the van on the way to the studio, I was talking about people who had two faces and Aquaria said to me, girl, I have so many faces, I'm a sphere. <laughs> You cannot say that she does not know herself. Nasca to Ipsum. Time for the mini challenge. Trade, trade. Basically, the girls have to get themselves up like Mianzes. I finally have a chance to show off my four pack, giving you Frida Kahlo realness. You know she was half Jewish. Joe Calderon. Eureka finally embraces the snatch game she should have done, Chris Farley. And Monet looks like the beaver from Narnia. <laughs> The winner of today's challenge goes to Eureka, and that means that she gets to be the puppet master behind the puppets on this week's maxi challenge, the makeover challenge. Into the room walk six of social media's biggest influencers. Today, we are gonna transform these assholes into pussies. That's gross. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like cautiously excited about this challenge because part of my YouTube brand is putting people in drag. Eureka knows that we are down to the wire and so she is going to be strategic. She chooses a partner for every queen that will end up being their demise. Her words. Luckily, she puts me with the person I locked eyes with right away. Chester C. <laughs> I like Chester because he's short and he dresses exactly like I do. A little button down, a little tie. Cameron doesn't seem to know that the trade challenge is over. Yep. I know that I have some walls to break down. My guy is very shy. He is a heterosexual. I don't want him to be self-conscious about that. Nobody's perfect. There's no way for us to walk around in heels and kiki without me first giving him a lesson in what it means to be a queen. Queens are basically shamans that bring the diva spirit down from the heavens into a gay bar for everyone to enjoy. The producers are a little worried. They're kind of like, Cracker, don't stand there and talk to him too much. I just at this point have to stay with my first mind. If I'm gonna go out of this show, it has to be being true to myself. Here's some things that they do not show. Our original name for my drag daughter was the Filipino word for cracker, because Chester is half Filipino. Rue said, girls, no one is going to remember a Filipino word. Of course, when I criticize Chester for being a little bit introverted, RuPaul's like, oh really, bitch? I know we're struggling with the same issue. This is one of those challenges where we film on a Friday and then we have the weekend to sort of, you know, freak out in our hotel room. Chester and I look at each other in the eye, I'm like, girl, come up with a name. I thought that my partner would have a 32 inch waist. Jesus was with me. Because Chester C had a 32 inch waist. Sorry, bitch, for calling you out. And it took me like 10 minutes to throw on the last of the butterflies on these garments. Okay, what do we have here? A bodysuit, which Michelle hates, and a circle dress, the least difficult thing to make. But that's I asked Chester his drag name and he has a surprise for me. He has no idea. <laughs> we are back to square one. A wrinkle in time, bitch. We are Friday evening right now. <laughs> I take that floppy circle skirt I have and I throw a beautiful tutu from Pattaya Heart underneath it. I'm a little worried that Cookie's outfit is pink and her tutu is purple. Everyone else is just struggling. All those YouTube videos that I did painting people's faces really trained me for the problems that you run into with people's makeup. I am just batting them away. The Serena Williams of problems right now. I like whisper into her ear, I think so far you look the best. And the producers have told us, don't let them see their faces till the last minute. Then I sort of find the place where the light is like, you know, exactly perfect. And I turn her around and there it is. This is what drag is about for me. When someone imagines they know who they are and then drag proves 
they don't know. It is time to get Chester into those heels. Chester is a whore. She is flirting with the cameraman. The producers ask her to talk a little bit about the other makeovers in the room. Then she goes right in. She's like, you see Cameron's partner? She looks pretty, you know, for like a whore in a DC hotel. I know from this bitch's behavior in drag that she is a snack like me, but sweeter. She's a cookie. Ms. Cookie, a liberated cookie. There is only one pair that is making me nervous. Eureka and Eufrika. Because the point of the challenge is to make your person happy and they were having a great time. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. So this is what we gotta do, bitch. Sell it. This is what I tell Cookie before we go out on stage. If you are not having a good time, it is the first thing that the judges will notice. Whatever we said before, whatever we rehearsed, forget it. Just fucking do you. Also, um, <clears throat> Michelle Visage will snatch your face off of your skull if you do not have a waistline. So bitch, you are about to be cinched by Garo. I put my foot in her lower back. Time to go out on the runway. RuPaul wisely advised that our partners should wear open toe vinyl platform shoes. Not on my watch. Cookie is living her life. Outshining me, come on ho. I don't have to act embarrassed on the runway because I am literally embarrassed. This is the life girl. Uh. Hello? <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm doing good. Monet and I are finally part of a club that allows blacks and Jews. We're so excited. <laughs> what I want to say is I have been able to survive this process because you've been giving me dabs of support, so thank you. Um, can I call you back in just a little bit? Because I am smack dab in the middle of shooting Review with the Jew. They tried to make me go to rehab, but I said no. Bye. Cookie loses a butterfly off her outfit, and instead of letting it go, the bitch turns around to pick it up and show that ass RuPaul loves so much. Cameron and Kelly bring the choreographies. I think maybe that morning I gave Monet lessons in hair. We had been planning to do it in New York for like six months. Bitch, I know this is late, but it's now or never. The judges critiques. They love Eureka and Eufrika. Ms. Cracker, the judges talked to me for four million hours. Wait, let me correct that. RuPaul talked to Cookie for four billion hours. He was telling Cookie to bend over again and again. RuPaul asked Cookie how the makeup made him feel. Cookie was honest. When I look in the mirror at a certain angle, I just see a beautiful woman. And RuPaul was like, can you look at the cameras right now and show them that angle? For like, you know, 20 minutes, Cookie was vamping for the bank of cameras. Ross Matthews told me that the purple tutu underneath the pink skirt was mwah. I was running around in circles in my heels. Living my life! That like review with the Jew confidence that I have now was beginning to surface then. Feeling myself, girl. But unfortunately, when it came to Monet's performance, the judges felt shortchanged. And Cameron and Kelly brought the LeMay, but not the shine. Untucked. I can't remember anything except for I thought Eureka was gonna win, so I was gonna tell everyone I thought that Eureka was ugly. For the first time in the history of season 10, Miss Cracker for the goddamn win. They cut this out, but I collapsed on myself. Miss Cracker, what's going on? Brew, you know I've been feeling like that shitty kid that keeps coming back to their parents for money when they don't deserve it. I've been at your door begging for a win and apparently it hasn't been mine to ask for. Did I make you feel that way? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it was me. I, <laughs> I made myself feel that way, like my inner saboteur. But what I really meant is y'all four have scared the shit out of me. Thank you for finally loving me. <laughs> I got to be something that you are seeing today, a star. Looking around at these other girls, I'm like, there's a chance for me to be at the fucking finale. I think the reason that I excelled in this challenge was 50% of my work in drag is reaching out to other queens and helping them, whether it's with hair or just getting baby queens into drag for the first time so they can feel what it's like. Drag saved my life and I wanted to do the same thing for as many people as possible. Rue also announces the bottom two, Monet Exchange and Cameron Michaels. I noticed something strange. Cameron, of course, is doing her eight count. I just don't see Monet giving that Monet energy. In fact, she 
walks right off the stage. But then when she comes back through the door, Monet Exchange is here to slay. I don't know if y'all clocked it, but her heels slide so far, it punches out two of the stage lights. There is shattered glass motherfucking everywhere. But Monet Exchange sashays away. I lost my sister. I don't know what else to say. I just tell her what's real. I fucking love her. I know there's just a couple of episodes left. So my father's words are ringing in my ears again. Now you have to prove to everyone that it's real by winning again. I love this episode because so many people have been pulling for me to win. I told y'all I will not let you down. Uh, but like more importantly, the people that like hate everything about me, especially my fashion, are falling apart with rage at home. And to me, that kind of negative energy is so much more enjoyable. So for people on both sides of the fence, let me tell you to stay tuned because next week is another brand new review with a Jew. And Monet, I'll see you at Turn It On Sunday, right?